Hello everyone. So this time we're going to be talking about crack propagation. Now we said last time that cracks are stress concentrators. They're great at concentrating stress. And the stress concentration is going to be higher for sharp cracks. So the ones that have the smaller radius of the tip. And it propagates at lower stresses than cracks with blunt tips. So blunt tips are going to take longer to propagate. Now the great thing about ductile materials is that yes, it could have a strong crack. However, as soon as it's stressed and that stress gets concentrated at that edge, well, it's actually going to deform the tip of the crack and blunt it. And that will actually lower the stress concentration, which is why ductile um, materials fail later. There is significant plastic deformation right there at the tip, which actually reduces the stress concentration. We want that. That's a good thing at least in most cases. So when do these cracks begin to grow? Well, there is a critical stress for crack propagation, at least for brittle materials. Um, for duct materials, it's there as well. You just have to replace this term with these two right here, where that um, gamma P is the plastic deformation energy. So. The critical stress for crack propagation in brittle materials, well, that's right there. Um, e is the modulus elasticity. Then we have our specific surface energy, which is something that you have to look up or be given. And then we have the length of that internal crack. Now, materials have a bunch of cracks in them. There's never just one crack in a material. So which one's going to fail first? And also what orientation is going to fail first? Well, the thing is that crack propagation and fracture are going to occur when that stress, that magnitude, that magnified stress is more than our critical stress for the crack with the lowest critical stress. So the largest cracks or the most highly stressed cracks are going to grow first. Whichever one reaches this criterion first is going to begin to fail first, um, which is why it's so important to take care of systems that are being used a lot, especially systems that are, you know, very, very, very um, valuable or have, you know, a lot of people around them. Like planes, for example, like there are cracks in the plane wing. Every plane eventually is going to have cracks in its wing. They're microscopic, but they grow and they grow over time. And so what you have to think about with that plane wing is you have to actually know, well, one, where are the cracks? You know, because it's not going to be obvious. It's not like you're just going to see like, okay, well, there's that big crack. It was halfway through this time. Now it's going to be it's three quarters of the way through. We should probably stop using this plane. No, they are microscopic cracks for the most part going through the wings. And they find them through ultrasounds and other techniques which can actually look at it and see the cracks from the exterior. They don't have to destroy them, cut the wing in half to see. Okay, let's cut it. Well, now there's a big cut in it. Can't use this wing anymore. No, they, they have to actually use tools that can actually look for and see the cracks. And then they determine this. They say, okay, is this wing still in good enough shape to go on this trip or go on 10 trips or go on 100 trips? Would a storm cause this to fail? Do we need to reinforce it? All these different things are going to come to mind. And this is one of those tools you're going to use to calculate that. Okay, that's it for this time. Thank you so very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.